Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Build Tune Race, and today is the day that we get to start Salty finally. I've been trying to do this for weeks now, and the time has finally come, but it's also the time that we got to get this car over to alignment and try to be racing in right around 24 hours from now. I got to get the chassis inserted, and then it's the test and tune day. Lots still to do, but we are at those final stages of getting this thing running, hopefully driving, align it. Hopefully we can squeeze in a little bit of dyno time for tomorrow. So not a lot of sleep in sight. I'm on about three hours right now, but I am ready to get this thing running. So I actually went over this morning and got a fitting to adapt the dart blocks a little bit different to my engine oil pre-oiler thing that we built. And I've used that thing a few times to pre-oil an engine. So I'm gonna pop the valve covers off and start feeding this thing some oil, make sure it comes up through the valley, all that stuff. And then once we have fluids all the way in this thing, gotta get fluid and shiny and everything else and then we can start it. The first thing I'm actually gonna do is go ahead and pop out my old injectors that I was using just to flush the lines and get those out. They'll go into a cleaning machine and then I'm gonna actually install the FID injectors. So I ended up going with the 2200s. I didn't know if there's part number or anything on here, no. But uh, the 2200 injectors from them. So this, should, this is again more than enough fuel on C16 to be able to make over 2000 horsepower. So a uh, high impedance injector, I was running low, so these will idle way better. You can really dial in your idle air fuel, especially the big low impedance uh, injectors like the big 160 pound plus, you start getting to a minimum pulse width and they don't get so happy. These, I believe are a lot better from what I've used and seen they're way better. So, uh, and th these guys get amazing reviews with their injectors and everything else. So I'm excited to put a good set of injectors finally in my car because I've kind of used hand-me-down ones and then cheaper ones and the deck 80s were good for the cheap combo but this this is where we're headed now and these are these are super nice I'm actually looking at it I kind of like the setup the way the fuel lines and everything are ran I should just be able to pull the bolts pick the line up swap injectors and put them back down since I already checked all the lines for leaks I shouldn't need to do that again since everything will stay tightened down fuel rail is loosened up I got me a little bowl to catch the fluid hopefully there's not in there not a lot in there These are a stubby style injector with the billet cap on top of it, but otherwise they're like a stock LS1 height, so these will go right in there. Injectors are all on, tightened down, everything's good, and bam, we got Ray, Alex, and AJ all showed up to help kind of bring this thing together. Ray brought me a piece to finish off. I got to weld like a little bung for the seatbelt mount in the cage. Alex and AJ are just helping me try to button up everything and keep me in line because I am, I'm, I'm tired and I'm, I need to double check on everything at this point. So we're going to go ahead and prime the engine now. So oil is finally going in this thing. So like I said, I built this little deal. Just open this up, pour oil in it. Go ahead and pump some oil into it. I already loosened up the valve cover, so I'm gonna pop those off so we can watch the oil come up through the rockers. So once you see everything go through the top, pretty much pour, push all, I put a quart in the oil filter, push the other like five-ish quarts through here, and then you can always top off whatever through the fill cap. But at least you know then, um, with the lifters and the rockers and everything being some of the last things to get oil in an LS. Actually, this is a priority main, so yeah, it would be towards the end of the system. Usually I think it's actually towards the front. You know that everything has oil in it, so then when you go to start it, it's not a dry start. Up uh, the pre-oiler now with oil, and then we're gonna turn it over on the crank as we let this push the oil into the system. And hopefully we see oil up top. There we go. I got my big old cheater bar, AKA jack handle and just give it a turn every about I don't know 20 30 20 30 seconds we'll do like a little eight turn so we're starting to get a little bit of oil on that side this is actually already went empty so it's probably taking a little while to fill up the lifters and yep we're starting to get oil up top here so not not bad you need a funnel that doesn't quite fit a funnel but also you need to put into a quick connect for the new dipstick um, yeah, that's 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 what you come up with when you need to you need to get fluid in this gosh dang thing. <laughs> yeah, got fuel in it, and I'm hooking up the ECU. <laughs> so we're going to put in the injector data in here. I'm just gonna clear my mind, run through everything. We'll run through it later in another video how I have everything set up. But uh, we are probably gonna be late to alignment, but we got to get this thing fired first. So we're just just going ahead at it. Now we kind of got a funnel and a rag. I'm going to have to protect this little situation. Go forward a little more. Forward, forward, forward there. 
Oh, yes. That VP fuel. So for anyone wondering, I just bought three pills of this and it's like $480. It's $140 a gallon after tax and everything. So not a gallon. Uh, a pill. So it turns out to be about $30 a gallon. Usually it's only about 20, 21, but now they're adding tax and that inflation and like all the crap. So I think it's a little cheaper with another local guy, but he didn't have any, so we're just trying to make it happen. Many hours later, we totally missed the alignment time and everything, and we're actually jerking the side back apart. The little ORB that went into the Maven mount that I welded above the chassis, I, will, I couldn't get the fitting tight on it. I was gonna pull the turbo apart. I was like, I'll just pull the ORB fitting out and then we'll tighten it back up. Well, tighten it back up. Somehow it didn't go back in and it seems like it messed up the threads. So we're gonna pull it all apart and look at it. We've been fighting it and fighting it and trying this and trying this, trying that, put it all back in. So it's totally dicked, but um, we're gonna try to get it fixed. We're gonna have somebody run and get a tap and die just in case we gotta chase threads and all that crap. So literally like 98% to firing this thing. And now we're going back apart with it because of issues so Hold on. Um, very frustrated and uh we're figuring it out but we'll get it fixed and then we'll fire this thing here hopefully shortly oh we're telling you guys uh you guys ready to oh frick right no so that's how our day is going actually april and jess ran to i don't know whatever that place is ran to a local place grabbed a tap and die the the threads were kind of dicked on this thing. The threads we cleaned up on this just in case. Uh, I think we're gonna drill a hole and put a sleeve in there so we can actually get to it with the uh, deal so we don't fight it ever again. So we're kind of prepping to do that and we said, you know what, just pull it apart, fix it all, make it right, and then move forward. So um, uh, sometimes you gotta take a few steps back to move forward. Well, now it's dark outside. We got the turbo back in and now we have an access hole to get to that little banjo fitting uh, so we don't fight that for multiple hours and mess up threads again. So now the car is easy to work on. Probably should have had an access like that first time. But I mean, it worked putting it together. So I was so worried about it. Then I was worried about it. And now we fixed it and kind of screwed us today. But we're, we're still working on it. Hell yeah, we are. Now we're going to finish putting it together and we're going to try to fire this thing up. All right, all right. Back together about all, I don't know, six hours later. But frick, guys, we're. We're back. Literally, this is the moment that should have happened like six hours ago. So we'll see from here forward how it goes starting the car um, and if we would have made it or not. And I hope I hope so. Let's find out. Alex is going to finish up a few more little things. He's working trying to bumper figure alignment. It out. And uh, we we'll load a tune in this thing and we're going to go. Doing some checks. We need a radiator fan. Well, this is kind of fancy. It's a brushless Dorelli fan, uh, which is made by Swallow or whatever. but. It runs off of PWM minus, so you can control how much at what RPM, tamp, whatever you want. So it's pretty sweet. So here's the bubble. We got it figured out and working. It runs off of PW minus, so it's backwards. Like 10% is 90. So if I go, or 10% I think is 100, and then it 90 is 10% or whatever. So 10%, click it in there, from the deal. Takes it a second. can control that up and down however you want. We're gonna try to fire this thing up. I'm gonna hop in on the other side. We got people in place just to check and verify everything goes good. Still got some programming to do as far as fuel pump and all that, figuring out the smart wire, but wish us luck. Fingers crossed, this goes good. Hey, big girl, almost. Good job, babe. It's a little lean. We gotta we gotta throw some fuel at it, but 
running. So I need to, we need to crack that, and once that's good, I can add some fuel to it, and then we can go from there, but it freaking runs. So <laughs> that's a long time coming. It's super, super cool. All right, got some work to do, though. It's definitely far from, for, for, far from good, but we're not too, not too bad. You know, firing the pipes after the day we had is awesome. Yeah, it's been a rough one. And they haven't even hear it. Like, just the amount of time the car's been down to hear it run, it sounds so different than it used to sound, too. It sounds... Well, it sounds beefy. It, it sounds track. pretty... It's pretty <laughs> totally different. Yeah, no, it's totally different sounding. It, you sound like a tractor. This thing don't sound like the tractor motors anymore. So <laughs> it's pretty, pretty cool. Get her warmed up. Bow. Do a couple heat cycles through it. And <laughs> it'd be nice to get this thing to completely idle. Up to temp. Make sure we got water. So now we we're trying to figure out, let's check brakes. Then I was like, well, let me put it in reverse. Oh wait, we got to program the trans brake to work. Oh wait, we got to send the the pin I said in the smart wire to power the trans brake. I didn't have that program, so program that now. So now we're gonna try reverse. Plus we had to reset some of the shifter stuff. So let's see, let's see what it does here. thing keeps popping but neutral is still going forward so we gotta figure that out salty's looking dang good sitting on the ground almost about to roll it outside put it in the trailer so we make a chester obviously we didn't make the dyno we didn't make it to an alignment but we're figuring things out we do think that the car might be a clean neutral transmission we, i thought it was just a regular shift pattern but maybe i got the wrong shifter I thought it was a regular shift pattern. It acts as a clean neutral, so I can still drive the car, like still functions, but the first, second shift wouldn't be auto with the air shift and stuff, so I might have to get a new shifter. We're gonna try to back this thing out, get it put in the trailer, so we can go to chassis cert first thing in the morning. in the morning and 
Salty's officially not on the rack. Actually, Bernie's in here because we gotta switch him out from sitting in the trailer. Salty's in the trailer. It's drivable. It drove in there. And it's running and driving. It is not near as far as we wanted. I don't get to go race tomorrow. Probably for a reason of just not rushing and not doing that stuff. And when I know that there's just enough against it and it's not where I really want it to be, there's no sense in rushing it. We've spent all this time, money, effort, energy to get it where it's at. There's just no sense in rushing it. So the plan will be to really dial it in, probably drive it some, get everything figured out, all the little things and program everything, spend some time with the car, get really familiar with all the settings and wiring and all that stuff, get it on the dyno, and then get to Vegas. So LS Fest West is in Vegas, and that's pretty much where we're going to end up debuting the car because I can't even run it tomorrow. So um, that'll be it, guys. Thanks for watching. I know today was crazy, but it wasn't for lack of trying of getting this thing done. But we got it done. If you want to see Salty's first passes, Dyna pulls, and all that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, if you would, for me to help push this out to new people. We'll see you guys in the next video.